We got a bunch of new shit that came out recently regarding the upcoming and current Call of Duty titles, so let's make fun of it. I mean, go over it in the Call of Duty news of the week. The story trailer for the Infinite Warfare campaign dropped on the official Call of Duty YouTube channel with the names of the big name actors that they landed in the title, as if to be name dropping like some smug asshole. It gives us an insight into the rationale for the Settlement Defense Front, who are the bad guys in the campaign led by antagonist Jon Snow, who plays a character who's dripping with nobility and arrogance, unlike his Game of Thrones character. He comes off like a dick, but we can never hate someone with eyes like that. We also get a glimpse of the first appearance of Conor McGregor following in the footsteps of Ronda Rousey of doing films after losing in their MMA career. This isn't the first time an athlete has graced the campaign of a Call of Duty game as Black Ops 3 had Marshawn Lynch, but hopefully McGregor will actually get a line and stay alive for more than two minutes in this one. I'm guessing that he will because he's not black and therefore not beholden to that entertainment media rule that his character is to die off quickly. We learn a little bit more about the good guys as well given that they're attacked and the only ships that are left remaining in the fleet are the Tigris and the Euphrates. Oh, Oh no, wait, that would have been too clever for the writers. The Tigress and the Retribution. Your character Reyes is promoted to captain, but is he ready to make the tough decisions that a leader needs to make? Jon Snow doesn't think so, and probably not, considering it's an FPS campaign that won't deviate from the straight line path that it's headed towards. God forbid you actually get to make a decision that will affect the storyline. Anyway, on to some multiplayer news for Infinite Warfare. The beta for the Xbox One will start on October 21st, according to the Microsoft Store, which conveniently places it on the same day that Battlefield 1 will launch, since Call of Duty is a cock block for gamers IRL and digitally. Additionally, Infinite Warfare will have 12 maps on launch, 13 if you include Terminal, which is the same as Black Ops 3, of which we know 5. The aforementioned Terminal, Frontier, which takes place on a space station around Neptune, because if it was orbiting Uranus, I don't think the immature kids would handle saying that out loud. Frost, which is a map set on the icy surface of Jupiter's moon Europa, and hopefully unlike Call of Duty Ghost maps, it won't be the size of Europa. Breakout, which is set in a mountain jail, basically copying Cryogen from Black Ops 3, and Throwback, which is an anachronistic 1950 these style maps set on a space station as if that makes any fucking sense at all. In the same article, multiplayer director Jordan Hirsch doesn't make the same mistake as Mark Rubin did in the previous iteration of the game and claim that quick scoping is completely removed from the game, but he did caution that it would be difficult saying that, quote, you have to get a headshot in order to get that one shot kill. So is Call of Duty finally going the battlefield route of only headshots are the one hit kills for snipers? Well, quick scoping is what happens when you're using an ancient engine that you had to make an ADS mechanic for and thus introduce timing windows, which don't make any sense for actually firing a weapon, combining that with the hand-holding aim assist. It's yet to be seen if they're going to go the Black Ops 3 route and drastically reduce the aim assist for only the sniper rifles, or if this is just more smoke to blow up people's asses. Lastly, on Infinite Warfare news, if you're a Brummy, you can get your hands on both Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered at the EGX event, which is taking place next weekend, September 22nd through the 25th. Any of you out there can let me know how the game feels and whether or not you could actually quickscope in it. Speaking of Modern Warfare Remastered, tons of complaining and no big surprise prize here given that it's Call of Duty. About the subtle changes to the original COD 4 which has been voiced from the community but Raven are actually taking the feedback unlike most other Call of Duty development studios. The headshot icons which are used in Advanced Warfare are now being reverted to the original ones and gun sounds on several of the weapons including the Barrett Fiddy Cal, the Deagle, the RPD and the M40A3 now more resemble the original versus the updated ones showed off at COD XP. This is actually pretty fucking hysterical to me. If you fuck trumpets don't want anything changed about the game at all and want it to be as close to the source material as possible, why not just play the fucking original game? Seriously, if everyone that's bitching about these things would just go back and play Call of Duty 4 right now, you'd have enough lobbies to not worry about hackers or shitty connections or any of the other nonsensical excuses that you come up with in order to justify this remaster. It's $10 on PC, goddammit, with every single map, including DLC, mod tools, and custom servers. Speaking of maps, we found out the 10 that will be in the game on launch, Ambush, Backlot, Bog, Crash, Crossfire, District, Downpour, Over grown shipment and vacant. Eerily missing is Strike, a map which is actually redone in Modern Warfare 2 for DLC, and Pipeline, which is reimagined in Advanced Warfare as Atlas Gorge. Also, the head of Raven Studios tweeted that the sensitivity values aren't the same in the remaster as in the original, thus they're considering a chart which plots values from one to the other. It's 2016, of course there's going to be higher sensitivity, fam. Lastly, in Modern Warfare and Infinite Warfare news, Activision announced that they will be supporting the PS4 Pro out of the box for both games on day one, and and that Black Ops 3 will be subsequently updated to support the new console, which is still aged in hardware technology in order for Sony to make a profit. Speaking of Black Ops 3, two new melee weapons have hit the black market, including the Ace of Spades, which they named as such because they bought the licensing rights to the song for the last Zombies DLC and they needed to get their money's worth. It's a shovel, which is a stolen idea from the Battlefield 1 beta, and it's a symbol for how Call of Duty needs to be buried. The second weapon is the Path of Sorrows, a katana-type sword, which very closely resembles Takeo's from Zombies. It's too bad that Zombies play 
have been clamoring for years in order to use his sword in the zombies mode, yet it's available in multiplayer via supply drops. There was also a patch release when the DLC was made available last week for Black Ops 3, which fixed a few bugs regarding the contracts and challenging counting because we all know how good Treyarch is at math. The only significant fix was patching a glitch in where people could use locked black market items. They don't want people using items unless they cough over some money in order to get them out of supply drops. Come on, fam. This, however, doesn't apply to the mysterious Bowie knife from Zombies, but they definitely mailed in this patch. As you can see, they're done with supporting the game unless it's for monetary purposes. I mean, hell, I still can't even get my full fucking parties into lobbies sometimes. And lastly, in Call of Duty community news, some of you have asked me about my opinion on the whole Biblical Reaper I Need Help video. Basically, he's having some trouble paying some bills and asked his subs to donate to him. While I could definitely empathize with where he's coming from, at the same time, I don't have sympathy for how he's conducted himself. He's obviously pretty bad at money management, which is something he's already admitted to, but when you decide to make YouTube your career instead of relying on a more steady income, you either need to be A, informative, or B, entertaining, and unfortunately, he's neither. When you regurgitate speculation for clickbait and your well runs dry because there's people that actually have information out there instead of photoshopped he said, she said info, people will go to them instead of you. He chose a path to quick success on the back of SEO and it backfired because he actually doesn't have the talent to do this. I don't think he's trying to scam people, but when you ask for donations, people are only going to donate if you provide them with something in exchange and he can't do that because of the reasons I previously mentioned. That's going to do it for the Call of Duty News of the Week. I've been the Schwanz 27 off like the bug spray. Until next time.